Hi and welcome to Campbell's Math Corner. Today we are going to be looking at trigonometry, specifically bearings. Now there are a few basic things that we need to we need to look at before we can actually solve problems involving bearings and as such this video will basically be an introduction. Alright, so when we think about bearings, well the first thing that should come to mind is directions. So here we have our cardinal points north, south, east and west. Notice from between well between north and east that will give us 90 degrees at east and from north to south that's 180 degrees from north to west that gives us a total of 270 degrees and then we come back all the way back around to 360 degrees so it's all about direction given in the form of angles so a bearing is a way of defining the of defining direction as an angle measured from the north in a clockwise direction what do we mean by that well let's say we have two points a and B now if we want the bearing of one point from another point the first thing that we need is our north line so if if we're leaving from A to B our north line should be extended from A and we're going to B so a straight line is drawn from A to B now what is the bearing of B from A again the key word here is from it tells us where act where where we're actually leaving from so since we're leaving from A and we're going to B our next thing is to measure from our north line in a clockwise direction always going a clockwise direction so this angle mark here will actually be the bearing of B from A now let's say that angle is actually 65 degrees notice the 65 degrees is written with a zero at the front this is because bearings are always written in three digits so when we actually give the bearing of B from A we would actually say it's 065 degrees now what this actually means if you're standing facing N from A by how many degrees would you have to turn in a clockwise direction until you actually reach B. So that's what that's what the bearing actually means. Now this time I want to find the bearing of A from B. So our north line this time will be extended from B and again we go in a clockwise direction So this angle mark here will actually be the bearing of A from B. Now I want you to pay attention to, this, to these two bearings that we have here. Notice that the bearing of B from A is 065 degrees and the bearing of A 
from B is 245 degrees. Now, I know you're probably wondering, how did we arrive at this 245 degrees? And we're going to be looking at that shortly. Now, bear in mind that a bearing is an angle between 0 and 360 degrees as was shown earlier on the cardinal points. Now how do these bearings actually relate to each other? Remember this 0, 065 degrees and this 245 degrees? Well, let's see how we actually arrived at these bearings. Now if we should extend these north lines you will notice that these two lines are parallel and whenever we have a straight line in this case called a transversal whenever a transversal passes through a pair of parallel lines some special angles are formed now if you look at these two yellow highlighted angles they have something in common these two angles are what we call alternate angles. Well, alternate angles are equal. Some people refer to them as Z angles. Now if this angle is 65 degrees it means that this angle will also be 65 degrees. Now if you look along this north line you should realize that it is an angle on a straight line. And angles on a straight line measure 180 degrees. Now if this here is 180 80 degrees and then this little piece here is 65 degrees then that will give us a total of 245 degrees and that's how we, we actually ended up with this 245 degrees. So those are some of the things that we look for when we're doing bearings. We try to identify alternate angles angles on a straight line. Alright, so let's see how, how, it, how it actually works. Let's see if we can try these. So, what is the bearing of A from B? Notice they said from B so it means that we're leaving from B from our north line and we always measure in a clockwise direction now this little angle here is what will determine the bearing of A from B now if you notice again this is a straight line and we should know that angles on a straight line measure 180 degrees so if here is 130 degrees it means that this piece must be 180 minus 130 which is 0, 050 0 degrees what is the bearing of C from D this time we're leaving from D so from our north line we're measuring a clockwise direction So this is the angle that we actually want. Now having extended our north lines, you should see the dead angles being formed or the alternate angles. And since alternate angles are equal, it means that these two angles are equal to 120. And of course we know that angles on a straight line measure 180. So the actual bearing of C from D would be 180 plus 120, which is 300 degrees. What is the bearing of X from Y? So we're leaving from Y, extend an art line, and we're going a clockwise direction. So this angle will represent the bearing of X from Y. Now how do we actually determine the amount? 
Well, if here is 130 degrees, we should know that a complete turn is actually 360 degrees. So to find this amount, we'd subtract 130 degrees from 360 degrees, and that will give us 230 degrees. So the bearing of X from Y is 230 degrees. What is the bearing of A from B? This time, we're leaving from B. So from our north line, we're measuring a clockwise direction. So this is the angle that we want. And since we can identify that this is a angle on a straight line or angles on a straight line, we know that this is 180 degrees. So if here is 50 degrees, it means then this will be 180 degrees minus 50 degrees, which is 130 degrees. So if you notice, once we can identify where we're actually leaving from, and we should remember that we always measure in a clockwise direction, Using our knowledge of alternate angles and, and angles on a straight line, it makes it easier to identify the bearings. So, here are some questions that you can try on your own. Feel free to pause the video and try. Alright, so if you had actually tried these then the first one says what is the bearing of X from Y so it means we're leaving from Y measure clockwise so that's the angle that we want and since these are angles on a straight line it means that the bearing of X from Y is 180 minus 120 which is 60 degrees next one what is the bearing of P from Q we're leaving from Q so if we should extend our north lines we should notice we should know that these two angles are alternate so these two angles are equal to 110 and then we have our angle on a straight line which is 180 so 180 plus 110 gives us 290. What is the bearing of W from O? So we're leaving from O and we're going in a clockwise direction again. And of course you can always extend your north line if you wish. So we know that this would be 360 minus 150 which will give us 210 and then the last one the bearing of A from B so we're leaving from B and of course you realize that this is also an angle on straight line so since angles on a straight line measure 180, then this bearing must be 180 minus 60 degrees, which is 120 degrees. So once we understand these basic things, you see it makes it easier to actually determine the bearing of one point from another point. Now, as we said earlier, this is basically an introduction and knowing these things will help us to better be able to manage the more complex questions. So for the students who are doing CSEC, I can so in the next video, we're going to be looking at some actual past paper questions and bearings. So for the students who will be sitting at CXE exams, whether, whether in January or that May, June, you need to look out for that one. So, until next time, 
take care and please remember to like share and subscribe